Well, hello there. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at money. Um, now, I, again, like with the previous video, I really do encourage you to read this module. There's some really interesting facts in it. Um, and, and if you're like me and you geek out about this stuff, I think you might enjoy it. There's, there's cool stuff in here about about the history of money and where it's come from, the different roles of it. Um, it's not particularly hard to read and it might not take you very long either. So um, particularly this part about commodity money is really interesting. So I encourage you to take a look at those. All right, let's get started with module 23. So first it says, suppose you hold a gift certificate good for certain products um, at participating stores. And then it asks, is this money? Why or why not? So extra practice, module 23, check your understanding number one. And, and I, I'm going to kind of ponder this one with you for a moment. Think about, is it really money? And money is three functions, store of value, unit of account, and medium of exchange. So let's start with store of value. So assume that, let's assume that the gift certificate is storing value indefinitely. But even then, it's relying on the fact that those stores stay in business, right? If those stores close, your gift certificate's worthless. So it's not as good as money, like actual money at that. Unit of account, it's relying on something else to be the unit of account. It's relying on the dollar to be the unit of account. So really it's not actually performing that function at all. It's just a stand in for it. It's a near money. And then the third thing is medium of exchange. And again, it's not really that good as a medium of exchange because you can't exchange it anywhere. It's only at the participating store. So I would say no, um, because it's not clearly Fulfilling, fulfilling, is that, that the word? Fulfilling all three functions, right? Um, that's kind of the, the quick and easy answer. But I do think you kind of ponder like different stuff that you've used as money in the past. Think about if it actually is really money. Now this next one says, although most bank accounts pay some interest, depositors can get a higher interest rate by buying a certificate of deposit or a CD. And the difference between a CD and a checking account is that the depositor pays a penalty for withdrawing the money before the CD comes due, a period of months or even years. So I have CDs that are you know, 12 months. And if I take my money out, the penalty that I pay is I don't get any of the interest, I get nothing. And so CDs are usually not considered part of M1, but they are part of M2. And this is asking why, why are they not part of M1? And so we'd say, because CDs are not very liquid, so not in M1. Um, M1 is only consisting of demand deposits, which are very, very liquid, and currency, which is the most liquid thing you can get. Um, so they're not very liquid. Number three, explain why a system of commodity-backed money uses resources more efficiently than a system of commodity money. Now, it's unlikely you're gonna see a question like this on the test, but the section that's in here actually does talk about why this would actually be advantageous. And it goes all the way back to 1776 with Adam Smith, one of the founders of modern economics. And this is the idea that commodity money requires using resources using resources as the money. So the, the downside, right, is that if you're using the commodity money, you actually have to use the actual silver and gold as the money. And so you're giving up the opportunity of doing something else with it. Whereas, right, whereas commodity, we'll say commodity backed money, you aren't. And the way that commodity backed money actually is, is you put that resource to work somewhere else and then you print money based on it. You use paper money basically in exchange for it. And so not everybody's gonna all the time want the commodity version. A lot of times people are gonna want the pieces of paper. They're easier to travel with, they're easier to use. And so people would rather use their piece of paper. And so the bank doesn't need to issue quite as much actual currency, physical commodity money. They can just use this paper money instead. Um, and so it allows you to 
kind of manage your money a little bit better, um, your money supply a little bit better, and you're not using as many resources. Now, they still have the downside that you aren't really controlling the money supply. You can't use anything to control it except the supply and demand of what that underlying commodity is. And so that's why most governments today have moved away from even commodity-backed money because you, you don't want to basically put the hands of your currency into gold and silver where, where there's just supply and demand. Now, the, there are risks to fiat money, and this section actually talks about the, the two big ones are counterfeiting, because it's really hard to counterfeit gold and silver, but it's much less, in theory, it's, it's you know, much less uh, difficult to counterfeit a $100 bill. Um, but the second, and perhaps the bigger risk of fiat money, is that the person whose job it is is to maintain how much money there is, the, the government employee who makes that decision, maybe they're not making that decision in the best interests of everybody in society and they might print too much right? and they could cause inflation. So there's fears, right, with, with all of these and there's downsides to all of these. Let's take a look at some of these multiple choice questions. When you use money to purchase your lunch, money is serving as, okay. So this one's a functions of money question. And we know that when you buy your lunch, you're using it as a medium of exchange. Now, th there are some students over the years who have argued with me and said, well, it's also a unit of account because you're, you're measuring the value of it. And, uh, no, quit bothering me. The primary purpose of the money in this case is medium of exchange. Naturally, whenever you, you're spending money on something, you're, you're measuring its value in unit of account but that kind of subsumes the whole purpose of this question. So really the correct answer here is, is medium of exchange. Um, over the years, I, I've had students who argue that it's unit of account and a medium of exchange. So what I've done in this, in this question on the quiz is I've eliminated that option where it's one and three only, just, just medium of exchange. That's the only one. All right, so that's A. Number two, when you decide you want $10 worth of something, money is serving as what? That's the unit of account, right? That's the idea of saying like, I want this many units worth of money or, or of you know sandwiches or of something. You're using money as the unit in that case. So that's three only, um, C. I like that these questions are back to back so you can really see the difference. In the US, the dollar is what's well, not backed by anything. It's fiat money now. So the correct answer is E. Number four, which of the following is the most liquid monetary aggregate? Monetary aggregate, again, if you read the section, you'll know what that means. It just means a money measure, money supply measure. So the, the most liquid would be, um, would be M1. Students will sometimes get confused and they'll choose dollar bills here, but that's not a monetary aggregate. That's just one type of physical currency. If we had said M0 instead of dollar bills, then M0 would be the clear winner. But we only have M1, M2, and M3. Those are the only monetary aggregates listed here. Um, and M3, just for what it's worth, I didn't talk about that in the lecture. M3 doesn't even exist. We, we used to count like a way bigger amount of money called M3. And then we kind of just were like, you know what? We can't really keep track of how much there is. So let's just forget about that one. So now we only keep track of the four that we talked about. Monetary base, M0, M1, and M2. So our correct answer here, long story short, is A. Number five, which of the following is the best example of using money as a store of value? Our customer pays in advance for $10 worth of gas. No, that's medium exchange. Babysitter puts her earnings in a dresser drawer while she saves to buy a bicycle. That's store of value because she's trying to keep the value. All right, so let's let's hold that in the back of our heads. We think it's probably B. Travelers buy meals on board an airline flight. That's medium of exchange. Foreign visitors to the US convert their currency to dollars at the airport. That's not really any of the functions of money. That's just them converting one asset into another. You use dollar bills to purchase soda from, the, again, medium of exchange. The correct answer is B. Let's take a look at free response number two and then get on our way. The US dollar derives its value from what? That is what backs the US currency. So first is the full, this is the actual thing, full faith and credit of the United States government. So nothing. Nothing technically backs it up, right? It's just the government saying, this is how much it is. This is what this is worth. B, what's the term used to describe this type of money? Well, by this point, hopefully you know, it's fiat, just like the car, fiat, make it so. Uh, what other types of money have been used throughout history? Define each. So the other two types would be commodity and commodity backed. Commodity backed. And they both what does it want? Define each. They both use a resource 
as the underlying kind of asset. A desirable resource is the idea here. So the whole notion of like why you would use a commodity money is because underlying it, there's some intrinsic value to it that's a value because you can use it for something else. And so you have commodity money, which is actually the physical thing, and then commodity backed money, which is pieces of paper that represent a certain amount of that valuable thing that's then held by a bank somewhere else. Um, but both of them kind of use some desirable resources, the underlying asset that gives the money value. All right, hopefully this helped you. I'll see you next time.